Hello everybody. I hope you are having a fantastic day. I'm having such a good day that I decided to make a video to tell you about something that is pretty exciting to me. Now, I am a massive fan of these XT IDE boards. And uh, so they come in a whole bunch of different form factors. I've made them on the channel before. I've put them in tandies. I've put them in all kinds of different things. Um, but these are very, very cool boards. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about them, but the very short version of them is that they allow you to put modern hard drives, and I use the term hard drives loosely, into retro computers. And so you can put things like compact flashcards or SD cards or SSDs or larger IDE drives, things that those computers were never meant to support. In my mind though, for as much as I love these boards, they have two fairly major drawbacks. The first one's a little bit more minor, and that is that they're 8-bit. And because they're 8-bit, there are certain operating systems that you can't install um, on an XT IDE that don't play very well with an 8-bit hard drive controller. Uh, but probably the bigger thing for me is just the cost. Um, I fix a lot of vintage computers, and something like this runs about $40, something like this runs about $70, and there's a whole bunch of different models that we won't get into in the middle that um, will run you anywhere between $40 to $70. And even the ones I built myself on this channel, I'll have a link in the description, they're great, but they do use a lot of parts. I think there were eight or 10 chips on there and they took a while to build and all that kind of stuff. And so um, I think I might have a better way. Before I get too far into it though, I want to talk about a YouTuber named Necroware who did a great series on taking these XT IDEs and putting the actual chip, because a lot of the magic is actually happening on this chip, but putting this chip in a network card and using the network card as your XT IDE and then using your computer's built-in controller to make it work. There's only one problem. I spent kind of a stupid amount of time trying to get various network cards to work and BIOS combinations, and I never fully got it to work the way that I wanted to, whether I was using a PCI or an ISA card or whatever. Never got it to fully work the way I wanted it to. Um, I am going to link to that playlist, though, because there's a ton of information that I'm not going to repeat because Necroware is the man, and he did an amazing job explaining how it all works. I believe the answer to all these problems comes from what I'm calling the $4 XT IDE. And this project is sponsored by PCBWay. Now, PCBWay allowed me to get 10 of these boards for landed for about 15 bucks total, including the shipping. If you get 20, you'd probably get them for around $2 a piece. Uh, but these boards use very few components. And, you know, like most things PCBWay gives me, they really do make my retro dreams come true. So I've actually put this together as a shared project that uh, you can just go on pcbway.com and you know add it to your cart and you can have these boards delivered to you in just a couple of days. And so I'm gonna show you what it is as opposed to all the components that you see here. We've got a compact flash reader, we've got a whole bunch of logic chips, we've got a ROM and switches and jumpers and you know things like that going on down here. This one is very, very simple. It is a ROM. It is an LS688 logic chip. It is a 10K resistor network, two capacitors, and places to put some jumpers. And the real magic is in the fact that I took the time to work out all the details so that you can actually just download the ROM and get going. All right, so I grabbed an old computer here. This happens to be a 486. Wouldn't really matter if it was a 286, 386, whatever. Um, but I'm gonna turn it on for just a second and you'll hear it is loud and it is running this old school 200 megabyte hard drive. So yeah, I love the sound and everything, but this hard drive isn't gonna last forever and uh, I am limited to 200 megabytes on a 486, which is a little bit ridiculous. So this seems like a good project to upgrade with one of these cards. So what I've done is I've pre-compiled a bunch of different versions of the BIOS. I've got 286 with two drives or four drives. I've got um, 386 and higher with uh, two, four, eight drives. I even did the XT one. Um, but so anyway, you just pick the BIOS file that's closest to the machine that you are trying to load and um, pop it in. So in this case, I only have one drive. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a two drive version of this card for the 386. And I'm going to disconnect the old hard drive so what I'm going to do is take my IDE to SD card adapter and I'm going to plug it in. Hopefully this is the right way. I'll figure that out in a second. And uh, we're going to apply power to the drive. And then I'm going to put my um, 
XT IDE $4 board in here with the flat side toward the back of the motherboard. So in here, you can just put it in here. I probably should have uh, beveled the edges a little bit, but just pop it in there and uh, that should be it. All right, so I've unplugged the hard drive, so hopefully we will have the sound of silence. Ah, oh, that's nice. And uh, we're gonna let this thing boot up. I have it set to um, ask me if I wanna go into the BIOS every single time it boots. Uh, so we'll do that right away. Skip that memory test. And we're gonna press F1 to configure the system. And you'll see in here we have it set up as a 200 meg hard drive and we can just um, go through there and just set it up telling it that there's no hard drive and hit escape and F4. So again, this thing will work on all kinds of weird computers, Tandys, 286s, 386s, 486s, Pentiums, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, so this time we don't need to configure the system. We're just gonna hit uh, spacebar to go forward. And if all goes well, we should be booting the DOS right off of that little SD card. As you can see, um, it's prompting for two drives and that's what I was talking about. I have it set up, some of them can do four, or they can even do up to eight different drives. Um, so we're gonna, we've got our little prompt here. There's nothing really on this SD card. Um, one of the things with these huge hard drives, the first time you hit DIR might take a little bit longer to, uh, you know, to get your bytes free. But um, as you see, I was able to partition this to, uh, I think four drives. So I've got E, got some games, stuff like that. And yeah, so got all kinds of just kind of fun stuff on there on this dead silent, highly reliable SD card. So I waited a while to make this video. I wanted to take the time to put these things through their paces. Um, I've got a couple notes for you. First thing is don't trust the silk screen on the front of the uh, board. This is where you want the jumpers. You want uh, one and three for most computers. You can fiddle around with it if that doesn't work for your needs. But for most computers, one and three will load you at D8000, which is exactly where you want to be. Um, this thing is truly a revelation to me. You know, I fix a lot of computers. And so the ability to have 10 of these for the price of one of these and, you know, basically 20 for the price of this uh, is awesome. The fact that you are using your built-in hard drive controller, which means you can use the onboard one, you can use a VLB. Uh, this VLB has uh, four drive spaces on there and it can use all four of them. Um, you can use just basically anything you want to use. Uh, it is absolutely fantastic. About the only downside is that if you're using something like this, um, you do have to use up a second slot, but basically I don't really ever run out of slots on the vast majority of the computers that I have. So um, it's not a major drawback, but it is a drawback to be aware of. So I did not design these boards and I have absolutely no idea where they came from. I found the, the Gerber files like a year ago and they've just been sitting in a folder and I decided what the heck, let me see what I can do. So I do wish that I could credit whoever made this thing, but uh, well, hold on, what's it say there? Wiretap 2021. Whoever Wiretap 2021 is, very much appreciated for the design. Your silk screen's wrong, but other than that, I appreciate it. I also want to say uh, you can do other things with these boards besides putting the XT IDE. You can put any kind of ROM in there. I just happen to think that this is one of the best uses for it. So I want to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video. I want to thank Necroware for all the hard work he did on kind of breaking down how all this stuff works. Helped me a ton. I'll have a link to that playlist. Also, you can get this board off of my PCBWare shared projects. In addition, I also have another version that costs about another dollar where you can put the EEPROM in there and program the board in the computer. I didn't need that, so I didn't make them for this project, but I do have a version that you can program it in the computer without having to have an EEPROM programmer. So um, anyway, hey, thanks for watching. I hope you guys find this thing helpful.